Welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 767, Reorganize String. Given a string s, rearrange the characters of s so that any two adjacent characters are not the same. Return any possible arrangement of s, or return an empty string if it's not possible. Let's look at our first example, ABA. So obviously, what are the arrangements we could have here? Well, we could leave it the same, AAB. We could do ABA, which is valid because no two characters are the same next to each other. We could do BAA, and that's it, right? But that doesn't work because these two have double A's. So the only valid one is going to be this one. And when we have AAAB, there's nowhere we could put this B that would prevent two A's from being next to each other, right? We could do B, A, 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 that doesn't work. We could do A, B, A, A, that doesn't work. We could do A, 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 B, A, that also doesn't work. And, you know, obviously all of the possible options mean that, um, you know, we can't do this. So in this case, we return an empty string. So how do we want to do this? Well, we're going to do this by making use of our old friend, the heap. So the first thing that we want to do is actually figure out the count of each character in our string. So for this one, AAB, we're going to build a dictionary which maps each character to its frequency. So in this case, it's going to be A and 2 and then B and 1. And we're going to put all of these um, you know, values into a heap. And what this is going to do is it's going to enable us to always have the most frequent character um, available to us and what we're gonna do is while the heap has more than two characters we're gonna pop whatever the top character is and the second highest character and we're gonna put them together that way we can always ensure that you know our characters will be spaced apart so in this case we'll have a a b and we'll put them in a heap so obviously two comes first because it's gonna be a max heap so we always want the largest value in this case so we would first get an a and we get our b and we can add them to our kind of string builder. And using this B will actually exhaust it. And then we'll have a, you know, just one A left that we need to work with. So obviously our solution was to always take the top two characters, but now we only have one character in our heap. So we need to basically figure out a way what to do when there's only one character or zero characters left in our heap. So if there's no characters, then we can just return our answer so far, and that will be valid. If we still have items in our heap, this is where it gets interesting. So our current string is AB, and in the heap, there's still an A with a frequency of 1. What we need to do here is if we still have a character, by the time our loop that to go through and get the top two elements finishes, what we want to do is we need to make a few checks here. If the count of that character is actually greater than one, then it doesn't matter how we arrange them, we won't be able to make it. So say the remaining was like C3 and we had A, B. There's no way we can arrange those remaining three that would actually work for us. So we need to make sure that the remaining count is actually just a one. Then what we need to do is we need to make sure that the, even if the count is one, that this character here does not equal to the last character we added to our string builder. Because if it was like A, B, A, and then we tried to add another A, even though this count is one, um, you know, we would only, we would not be able to put these two together because they are the same character. So that way, we have to check that not only the count remaining for our character is one, but it also, that character does not equal to the last one we inserted. So in our actual example, this would be fine because the count is one and A does not equal to B. So we can slap it on the end and then just return this string. If ever we fail, we just return our empty string and we're done. So that was quite the mouthful. Let's go to the code editor and write this out. It's actually quite simple and very intuitive once you see the code and I'll walk you through it line by line. So I'll see you in the code editor. We're back in the code editor, let's code this up. Remember that we're gonna need to build a heap which contains each character and its count, but we need to know each of the counts, so let's count each of the characters in our string. So we're gonna say s counts, and in Python we can just make use of collections.counter to basically build that dictionary for us, 
if you don't have access to this, if you're not using Python, then just go through your string character by character and then just have a dictionary of the counts. Pretty simple. So now we need to actually build the heap and we're going to be storing the character and its count. And obviously we sort the heap based on the count and we always want the largest count first. So we need a max heap. So in Python, the default heap implementation is a min heap. So we're just going to use negative values with the min heap to get a max heap. So we're going to say heap and we're going to pass minus count and the character for character uh, count in s counts uh, dot items. So we're going to iterate through all of the uh, character and count pairs in our s counts dictionary and then we're going to add them to the heap. Now, this is just a list. We actually haven't made a heap yet. So let's call heap q dot heapify on this uh, list object to actually make it into a heap and sort it in the correct order. We're going to need a string builder to basically hold our results. So we're going to say res and this is going to equal to an empty list. Now what we need to do is we need to always take the top two characters from our heap and add them to our um, you know, result here. And we're always going to be popping twice from the heap. So we need to make sure that we actually have two items to uh, pop. <clears throat> so our while loop for the heap is actually going to be while the length of the heap is actually greater than or equal to two. Because if we had anything less than that, then we would be popping twice and we could potentially pop on an empty heap, which would give us a um, error. So we don't want that. We want to make sure that we always have at least two elements to pop. So let's pop the top item. So we're going to say the top count and the top character is going to equal to heap q dot heap pop. And then we're also want to get the next character. So we're going to say next count and next character equals heap q dot heap pop. So we've popped from the heap twice. Now we want to add both of those characters to our result. So we're going to say res dot append. We're going to say oops top char and we want to say res dot append the next character. Now what we want to do is we've used one uh, of those characters, but we've only used one of its counts. So we have to add it back onto the heap, but just increment its count by one. So remember that we're using negative counts here. So what we're doing is instead of decrementing the count, we're actually increasing the count because it's negative, right? We want to approach zero um, by adding this time. So we just want to make sure that we're not at zero yet. So we're going to say if top count plus one, so basically, as long as this doesn't equal to zero, because that would indicate that we've actually used up all of the count and we don't need to add it back to the heap. As long as we need to put it back onto the heap, we're going to say heap q dot heap push. So we're going to push onto the heap and we're going to push what? Uh, we're going to put the top count, so plus one, and we're going to put that character back. We're going to do the same thing with the next character. So we're going to say if next count plus one. So if adding one to the count doesn't make it zero, then we want to add that character back onto the heap. So we're going to say heap q dot heap push and we're going to push onto the heap. And again, it's going to be the next character plus one. Uh, sorry, next count plus one, next count plus one, and then the next character. So that will basically add those characters back onto the heap and we can continue with our while loop. When this statement breaks, basically either the length of the heap is going to be zero or it's going to be one. Now, if it's zero, that's super simple because we can just return our solution and we've actually found a solution. If it's one, then we need to handle those edge cases that we talked about. So let's do that. So we're going to say if heap. So basically, this means that there's one item left on the heap. We're going to say top count, uh, top count, and whatever that character is, is going to be heap heap q dot heap pop. So we're going to pop those items from the heap. Now we need to make sure that they're actually valid, right? So what does it mean for it not to be valid? Well, if the count is greater than one, then we know that we'd have more than one of the same character in a row, which we can't have. So we need to make sure that our count doesn't equal to one. And we also need to make sure, uh, sorry, that our count equals to one. We want it to be one because that would mean we just put that character in. And we want to make sure that the current character doesn't equal to the last character we added. Say our string builder now is AB and the last character that we have here is B. If we were to add this to the string builder, obviously we'd have two B's in a row. So that wouldn't work. So we need to make sure not only that we have one you know, count left, but also that character doesn't equal to the last character in our result. 
So let's add a statement to check if either of those happen. So we're going to say if top count um, does not equal to minus one, remember that we're using negative counts here. So as long as there's not minus one or the top character uh, actually equals to the result. So these are the two cases that would trigger us uh, not to have an answer here. So we're going to return the empty string, which is what it tells us to do if we can't rearrange it. Uh, otherwise, what we want to do is simply just say um, result.append, whatever that top character was. So we're going to just going to add top care. And then at this point, we'll have a solution. So all we need to do is remember that we need to return a string, not the string builder. So we just need to drink, join the string builder. So we're going to say empty string dot join our result. And that will be our answer. I'm just going to run this, make sure I didn't make any syntax errors. And once this runs, da -da 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 -da, cool, looks like it's good. Let me just submit this and we are good to go. So what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm? Well, our algorithm here will be dominated by the fact that we need to make this heap. Everything else uh, is going to be less time complexity than actually building the heap. So building the heap, let's see how many characters are on our heap, right? There's going to be n characters in the heap. And, you know, adding a character to the heap is going to be log n time. So the time complexity is going to be n log n. And then the space complexity of our heap. Obviously, we have n characters on our heap, so it's going to be big O of n to actually store all those items in our heap. So that is how you solve this problem. Not too crazy, pretty straightforward once you realize that you can just pop the top two characters and then you have the little edge case at the end. Uh, anyway, that's the solution for this problem. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.